Hello and welcome back. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at our channel update for September 2023. We do have quite a full agenda so we'll jump right into it. Topic number one that I wanted to showcase you is a look behind the scenes. As of the recording of this video we are dangling around the 5850 subscribers mark. I wanted to issue a big thank you to everybody who is supporting the channel really appreciate that. I wanted to also show what I know about you guys. Uh, on the one hand side, YouTube, for those who don't have a YouTube account, does have a nice little breakthrough of the nationality of your viewers. Uh, we can see that the majority of viewers come from the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, and typically Australia is at number five, but somehow Poland has uh, made its way in there. You can see a lot of uh, European uh, Union uh, countries, Russia is in there, uh, Brazil, and a couple of other countries. So that's just kind of fun uh, statistics for you to digest. What I really liked, a couple of things to highlight, is most of you watch the videos for a long period of time, so 12 minute average view duration is a lot. 1.2 million people have seen impressions of my videos and I have had the pleasure of interacting with over 20,000 of you just in the last month. So these are great numbers for me. It's one of the things that I really, really appreciate about YouTube, the whole community. Hope that is enjoyable, but let's now also move into the actual content of the channel. All right, topic number two is the game cycles and how I would want to establish the channel in the future. It's mostly professionalizing and streamlining the content really. So as you can appreciate that with the growth of the channel, uh, you also get new opportunities to, for instance, participate in early releases. I get actually quite a few emails recently with early game reviews because developers typically want exposure and quote unquote targeted audiences of tactical games are uh, in a huge demand. But I want to not sell out on the channel, so I'll be very selective on the offers that I'm taking up, only games that I sort of feel match the spirit of the channel. Nonetheless, I noticed that there is potentially not enough interest in full game uh, plays or full let's plays for every single game. So. What I would want to do is kind of a four step uh, concept. I will uh, accept a lot of the game reviews. I turned down a few, but uh, most of them I'm doing. As by now, I'm still trying to f uh, figure out the correct pedigree of how I make really good reviews. It gets better every single time. Uh, when you see the newest reviews, they actually become uh, substantially better than the first ones. And I want to be fair and balanced in the analysis because I think a lot of the reviews nowadays are just way too hyped up. Topic number two would then be a new idea, which is called the new concept. I call it mini Let's Plays. So this is really just a two-parter of me showcasing the game. Could be at the beginning or somewhere in the middle of the game to, to tease and get an understanding if the game is worth our while. That, however, calls for engagement. If people really like the game, uh, then they need to make that known. Um, if that's not the case, as you can see, uh, it essentially will die down. However, if it is uh, the case, I will then start to actually produce a full playthrough and eventually afterwards also produce guides and kind of the tips afterwards. What I will say is uh, you will oftentimes in the future see the released guides before the blind playthrough, but that is just me re uh, releasing it in the opposite order, kind of to tease what's good and then uh, showcasing how I needed to find uh, that out. Most of, actually all of my playthroughs of new games are blind playthroughs and since I have been asked about it, I am typically pre-recording the playthroughs as well. So that's kind of the concept, the four uh, steps. Uh, appreciate feedback, what are your thoughts around that? Topic number three, game reviews. So I was speaking about game reviews and I just wanted to give you an overview about a couple of the reviews that came up lately, as I mentioned, I'm still working on the pedigree of making them great. Came up with a, I think, good categorization to make it a bit more objective. I will always showcase game footage, but give you kind of an unfiltered uh, opinion about how the games are progressing. I had Shadow Gambit and Gore, two very interesting new games that I had been asked to review. Jagged Alliance 3, definitely a highlight of my reviews. Xenonauts 2 and uh, Every Day We Fight was another double request that I received from two game studios. And I did a Aliens Dark Descent review by myself. 
That will come out a bit later, so it's a bit of a, a foreshadowing of things that are going to come. Topic number four, game guides. So as I already mentioned, game guides are only appearing when I really finish the game. My biggest gripe with game guides nowadays is when I look at the publicly sponsored larger pages, all they are trying to do is right after the release of the game to produce some sort of game guide just to hit kind of that level one spot in Google and then it's the snowballing effect of search engine optimization. Reality is most of those guides, at least in my opinion, are extremely poor. The people that are writing them haven't fully understood the game mechanics, oftentimes only played less than 10 hours in the game, never finished the game and never really looked into the mechanics. Uh, whenever I'm looking into a game a guide, what I actually would want to get out of it is I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to get any hearsay or maybes and I for sure don't want to take uh, untested strategies into account as quote unquote the best strategies. So I'm only producing guides for games where there is enough depth uh, that you need help in building them. There are a couple of very obvious games where that is not necessary so there wouldn't be a game guide coming out. And all of the guides that I'm trying to produce are of high quality, succinct, really on point trying to be between 10 and 20 minutes because I appreciate that people don't want to spend much longer in that. And I'm trying to basically explain proven strategies that work on the highest um, difficulty level and that I've uh, used. I'm only doing guides after I finish the game. So that's my philosophy behind it. And to be fair, the guides are together with the reviews by far the most consistent videos of all. So you guys seem to like them and I'm happy to uh, continue making them. Topic number five, what are the ongoing Let's Plays? So the things that either are currently already running or that are uh, finishing in terms of being aired. I have two mini Let's Plays, one from Gord and one from Shadow Gambit. I think Gord is an interesting game with a very niche focus. You guys, I think, didn't really like it. So uh, there's a low uh, likelihood that I will give it a full uh, playthrough. Shadow Gambit, on the other hand, might slip into the actual full Let's Play op uh, opportunities. It was a good game. The game itself was addictive, but it required some more refinement. So I hope over the next weeks that that can happen. The games that are running and that are being received very well is Phoenix Point, Jagged Alliance 3 and Xenonauts 2. Not very surprising because they are very XCOM-esque in the way that they are... Um, presenting themselves. It was absolutely phenomenal that Jagged Alliance 3 and Xenonauts came out at the same time. So I needed to effectively play two games, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. So uh, those are uh, great games. I can recommend all three of them. And uh, the uh, playthroughs are still going. Which nicely brings us to topic number six, the Let's Plays that are supposed to be aired. So this is a bit of a sneak peek of the upcoming month and the variety content that I'm presenting. Option number one or topic number one here will be Gladius Relics of War, which is a Warhammer 40k adaptation in a civilization type of style. Really interesting game, two years old, but I gave it a shot. It was on my bucket list for a long period of time and it was definitely a fun little experiment. I played the Space Marines against the Orcs and that's all I'm going to say about it. Orcs, Orcs, Orcs. Next one, uh, Alien Dark Descent, definitely a big title, uh, came out just uh, when all of the other games were hitting kind of the summer break. Uh, very, very intense game. Definitely atmospherical, great lore background. And I went in blind, not knowing what to do with it. I will also release guides, which tells you that I played completely through it. And yeah, I do have an opinion about uh, the game as well as quite an intense journey in the game on IS difficulty. And then finally, Jagged Alliance 3. This is one of those, those games which didn't fully let me go after the first playthrough. So I wanted to do something harder because it felt like I cracked the code. So uh, in order to make it much harder before like a plethora of mods are now uh, being created, I essentially started and looked at the achievements and figured how about uh, playing it on the hardest difficulty with Iron Man with uh, the lethality option 
and uh, with all of the hardcoreness of the normal run enabled but do the entire run with only one person which is called lone wolf in uh, the actual achievements and do a time is money run which is the jack the lions equivalent for exquisite timing so you need to finish the game in less than an in-game month which really requires you to rush through it so That'll be the Hardcore Lone Wolf Run. I didn't come up with a more catchy name uh, than that, but that will be fun, so watch out for it. Topic number seven, the production queue in the background. Uh, the, for those of you who have seen my last video, I gave a bit of an overview about what I want to do throughout this year. And Phoenix Boy and Jack Lines 3, the Aliens Dark Descent and Xenonauts are already done. I do have some more time potentially, so Baldur's Gate is definitely in uh, my side and the War Tales DLC and the new difficulty, I would definitely like to try that as well. I will say though, I'm also thinking about a bit more co-op material. You guys liked Chris from the uh, co-apocalypse XCOM run and both War Tales as well as Jagged Alliance 3 actually feature co-op modus, believe it or not. And so how about we invite him and have a little fun together. Should be harmless and a good demonstration of co-op modus. Topic number eight, the last XCOM 2 run. I know, I know, cliffhanger. We put the XCOM content at the end of the channel update. How dare I to let you sit through all of the variety content before coming to the stuff that you actually wanted to see. So Against the Hive has just finished to air. Thank you for the support, thank you for the kind words. I must say throughout the actual run that uh, there were periods where it really felt grindy and where it was literally draining me physically because two hour missions against chrysalids are becoming very, very intense uh, soon. But in hindsight, by reflecting about it, I think the run had a lot going for it, a couple of things to learn from. The proficiency classes were great and I will use them going forward. Uh, one of the runs that I'm currently producing will fe uh, feature them again. Whether or not they will always be the standard, I don't know, but they were definitely enough fun to use them. The no upgrade, uh, specifically the no armor upgrade, increased lethality and difficulty. I appreciated that, so that'll be a method in the future to also keep the game difficult. The game itself was great mid to early, but fell off a little bit in the later uh, sections. I think the run had very close missions, great shootouts, sometimes immense openers where we were freezing two full packs and then just the action continued on and on and on. So it was really good. I think those were the highlights. Uh, the hive itself was menacing, albeit some of the enemies tended to be a bit overtuned at times and specifically the spawn mechanic was highly highly problematic later in the game so spawn mechanic plus triple uh, or 3.5 times uh, SWAT size made it uh, so that the last missions with anything but the main team couldn't really be won. Also I took the feedback that there was maybe a bit too much hogbite and I can uh, see that for future runs we will likely take Hogbite out. So for future Psyche and only runs that is, I don't want to foreshadow anything, but maybe I'm using it, uh, uh, using him in the campaign with Tapcat together. But I get the point, the Templar super strong and kind of trivializes some of the content. I want to showcase a bit more variety and um, well, the Templar can't be in every single run is I guess uh, the bottom line here. Which nicely brings us to topic number nine, upcoming XCOM content. In the production is still the collaboration with Tapcat. Some of you asked me in the comment section, what does that mean? We do have a two against the Overlords campaign that we're working uh, through together. But since we need to flip flop uh, the missions, it actually just takes a lot of real life time with other appointments besides it. So. It is about 80% done, but I don't have an immediate run to post for you. So what we're going to do in order to like scratch the XCOM itch in between is I have pre-produced in anticipation of maybe shortcomings and timing. I've pre-produced at least one Saving Your Disaster campaign, the Grenadier debacle. 
but I've just received a fresh second one and I think I have even a third one in the chamber. So maybe we're going to see a little bit content there until the production with TabKit is done. I hope you can understand it, but the run will be even greater once it actually um, materializes. It's the first time that two YouTubers do a full campaign together in XCOM. So that's just awesome. And I won't spoil anything, but it is a good uh, set of mods. It is actually really, really fun. Anyways, moving on. Finally, topic number 10, and this will be the topic where I will need your votes, ladies and gentlemen, is what should be the next XCOM 2 Saigon run. So let's be clear, I'm almost done with the TabCat run. That means there will be a few months of TabCat and I flip-flopping videos, but since everybody of us is uh, uploading them in a flip-flop nature, it will be a faster progression than typical. So assume that it will be anywhere around two months that the entirety airs. So that naturally begs the question, what is going to be the next XCOM 2 Saiken run? And I cooked up three interesting meals for you and you just need to let me know which one tastes uh, the most. Option number one here is the Praetorian's Awakening. Remember that I was asking for kind of the style or the enemy types and you told me you wanted to see the hive. Then there were a lot of people wanting to see Psy enemies. The Praetorian scored third in kind of all of those enemy scorings. So I would want to bring them to life. They are quite scary. I will use a similar amount of mods, but I will mix them a little bit. We'll keep some of the stuff that is good in this run, such as the maps maybe use a different class pack, no hero classes. I will definitely increase the pod size to double or triple size. Maybe we're again going without any upgrades or limited upgrades to magnetic weapons, who knows? And I definitely would want one or two more game mechanics in the game. There are a couple of mods that just offer additional stuff that I would like to showcase. So uh, imagine it as a stronger version of Advent more decisive, meaner abilities, and just greater shootout. So it's all of uh, the uh, mm, recipes that made the Hive run very, very attractive, but we're removing the spawn mechanics and we're mixing up uh, just a little bit new. So I would call that potentially kind of the vanilla standard uh, meal that I could uh, offer you. I shouldn't say vanilla because that is actually the name of the second meal, which is the actual vanilla uh, meal, Vanilla Worth the Chosen Run. Now, I hope you can uh, understand my difficulty with coming up with challenges around XCOM 2 without any mods because after beating it with only rookies, with only one person, with only one class, with uh, basically better strike and hundreds, hundreds of extra enemies. The, the point remains that there is, uh, you can always twist it a little bit, but I'm running out of meaningful new challenges that haven't already been attempted by me in the past. But I came up with three and I will bundle those as uh, three dif different options. So basically to A, B and C. Option number one is an indirect damage run. So that was already known as the explosion run, but I will expand it a little bit so that psionic indirect damage also counts. I don't know how to pull it off because it will be quite difficult. You have very, very limited arsenal of explosives at your disposal. And that's really all you get, that's it. You need to beat legendary Iron Man with only uh, indirect damage. The second run <laughs> is a bit of a joke, but it could have some depth in it that uh, could make it meaningfully difficult. It's the no cover run. So whatever I do in that run, I cannot take any predefined cover. I say predefined because I want to keep the option open that I might use the Templar in a more uh, mm, esoteric way and create a couple of pylons uh, to, to actually create cover. But maybe I'll just straight out ban the Spark and the Templar, the both classes that could deal with a no cover uh, solution. And we will go all the way no cover. Maybe I'm even going to take out the Reaper so that you don't, that you can't hide. So you need to actually engage 
and you cannot take cover. So that will definitely lead to lethality and a lot of uh, just open confrontation. So that's 2B. 2C would be the flawless run. And that is actually me running all of the missions or trying to run all of the missions back to back flawless. No death, no damage taken, nothing. Um, that might sound great on paper. I'll give a bit of a consideration. I'm not sure if you really want to see like 30 missions flawless in a row. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I can pull it off, but I am not sure if it leads to a huge satisfactory um, viewing pleasure. I'll leave that up to you. You, uh, you. you can be the judge of whether or not you want to see that. And then option number three, completely different topic. I know a lot of you are long more of the Chosen fans. That's great. No problemo for me. I promised you that I would revisit it at some point. If this year gets the majority of the votes, then we're in for a long war legendary Iron Man campaign. Standard mod list, no mod jam. We're just going to run it back, but I will limit the campaign to 50 missions. I don't want to go 200 missions again. Uh, it's not going to happen. So we'll choose a good breaking point somewhere around uh, 30 to 50 missions, but you will get some long war of the chosen. So let me know what you think. I'll air a actual question to you and i would ask you to participate the more the merrier please participate whatever run is taking the most votes will win thank you for watching and have a great day everybody bye bye